Hello, I'm Craig Bernbeck, and welcome to this episode of EPS Inspires, your periodic look at news and information from around Evergreen Public Schools. Let's begin with a look at how our district is going above and beyond to make sure students leave our schools with that very important document, a high school diploma. Washington State's graduation rates for the 2018-2019 school year are out, and Evergreen Public Schools is very excited about reaching a major milestone. In the past, we've been in the 80s, uh, low 80s to mid 80s, and so uh, to kind of hit that bar over 90% was just a number that uh, I think a lot of us thought maybe was unattainable. The district's graduation rate actually topped 91% last year. That's about 10% above the 2018 state average, and it's an increase of almost 4% from just a year before, and it's an almost 8% jump from 2016. Through thinking about our why and our purpose of, of serving students in the, in the community, we've been able to um, meet the community needs, meet the needs of the students, and, and hit that goal. So it's pretty awesome to see us pass 90%. Increases like this don't happen by accident. It's a team effort that starts in kindergarten and culminates in high school. We have in every one of our high schools these freshman success teams now that are working individually to identify Students that maybe uh, need a little bit more of a nudge. The district's specialized high schools have their own reasons to brag. Henrietta Lacks Health and Bioscience High School had a graduation rate of over 98%. And Legacy, the district's alternative high school, has seen their graduation rate jump from just 7.7% .7 in 2015 to almost 70% in the latest numbers. When you can look and say we are at now at almost a 70% graduation rate, that shows the work that we've done, all the hard work and all the hard work students have done is paying off. These graduation numbers are something to be proud of, but everyone in the district knows there's still ways to improve. That's correct. We, we want to make sure that we launch them into their next transition in life uh, so that they experience success. Three, two, one. One of the ways Evergreen Public Schools is pushing that graduation rate higher is by stressing that attendance matters. I recently paid a visit to Covington Middle School, which is partnering with their six feeder elementary schools and Heritage High School to make sure students and families understand how important it is to be in class. When you walk the halls in Covington Middle School, it becomes clear quickly that this school wants their kids in class. There's an attendance board and posters and banners everywhere reminding kids that attendance matters. It became really apparent to me early on as a teacher that if I didn't have kids in the classroom, I couldn't, I couldn't help them. With that passion pushing him, Covington Associate Principal Jamie Johnston has been spearheading a plan to end chronic absenteeism. But we're talking right around 30 plus percent of our kids and nationally are chronically absent and Evergreen School District wouldn't be far behind in that. Chronic absenteeism is defined as missing 18 or more school days per year. And if you miss that much school, it makes an impact. For instance, if a student misses one day every two weeks, that adds up to missing a month of school a year and over a 13-year school career, that student will miss about a year and a half of lessons. Research also shows that a student who misses an average of 10 or more days of school per year is 20% less likely to graduate high school. Educating students and parents about the importance of attendance was the first step. Our goal at Covington is we want every kid not to have perfect attendance because we don't see that as being realistic, but our goal is that they'll all have great attendance and that means they'll miss nine days or less in a school year. Building relationships is the next step. This is Rebecca Meach. And that's where paraeducator Rebecca Meach steps in. Most of the meetings I have about intervention with parents whose students have missed a lot, they're shocked that, oh, my kids missed 25 days? I had no idea. Like, they knew, but they didn't think about it adding up in the sense of that's a significant amount of time lost. Once their system was in place at Covington, they realized they needed to start the education process at the start of a student's educational journey. 
all that we were doing at Covington wasn't enough because a lot of our kids had already had five years of chronic absenteeism. And again, habits are hard to change. So Covington has teamed up with its six feeder elementary schools and Heritage High School to ensure their students will start and end with the same messaging. So it's gonna be from kindergarten to 12th grade, parents are getting a unified message. The total impact of all these plans won't be known for years, but at Covington, there's already been an immediate positive impact. It's doing really well. Like I've, I've got kids that were chronic kids that had perfect attendance in September, or they had perfect attendance in October, and I'm finding them on the stairs, giving them high fives, and being like, yay! Time now for some social media moments. For that, let's turn things over to Matt Griffin. Thanks, Craig. We've picked a collection of social media posts from the last couple of weeks to give you a glimpse of some of what's happening around Evergreen Public Schools. First, let's start with Instagram, where the Evergreen Public Schools Board of Directors was named a Washington State School Board of Distinction for the sixth time in the last decade. As part of the recognition process, the board was praised for its work to help raise our graduation rate to 91 percent. Next, over to Evergreen High School, where Superintendent Mike Merlino and Safety and Security Director Shane Gardner presented a special honor to former Evergreen High School Resource Officer Nick Landis. Officer Landis was named Washington School Resource Officer of the Year by the Washington School Safety Organization. We thank Officer Landis for his years of service to Evergreen High School. Next, over to Fircrest Elementary School, where students held a Veterans Day assembly. Among the veterans honored was music teacher John Velasquez, who led the choir in full uniform. Next, the students at Harmony Elementary School recently gave back to their community by reading to residents of the Quarry Senior Living. Students shared their love of reading and community with residents in this project, sponsored by the Harmony PTA. Next, take a look at what looks like a work of modern art. It's actually the, one of the polished floors that workers have installed at the new Sifton Elementary School, scheduled to open for the 2020-2021 school year. Next, over to Mountain View High School, which recently hosted the annual elementary PE showcase. Students from all of our elementary schools showcase the skills they're learning to lead healthy, active lives for a lifetime. Next, over to Henrietta Lacks Health and Bioscience High School, where students recently had a chance to impress U.S. Senator Patty Murray of Washington. The senator toured the school and spoke at length with students about the importance of health and bioscience careers to the Washington state economy. Next, over to Fircrest Elementary School, where students got a jump start on Thanksgiving by making paper bag turkeys with the help of Art Discovery volunteers. And yes, cleaning up after students finished the project was all part of the lesson. And here's a message that's important any day of the week. We're happy you're here. Though this was the message students and staff at Pioneer Elementary School shared on World Kindness Day. And finally, we head over to Heritage High School, where more than 250 fifth through eighth graders recently took part in the annual Girls in STEM and Boys 2 event. Students spent a Saturday exploring chemistry, engineering, robotics, game design, and other STEM-related subjects. Be sure to follow Evergreen Public Schools on social media. We'll have the addresses where you can follow us at the end of the program. Craig, back to you. Thanks, Matt. Well, some students at Union High School are learning what it takes to fly above the crowd. They're learning to fly, fix, and program drones. Yes, it's a lot of fun, but learning these skills can also lead to a high paying job in a growing industry. At first glance, someone might wonder if these Union High School students were breaking some kind of school rule, flying drones in the commons. Oh, it's so fun. <laughs> but no, this isn't rogue behavior. This is Mr. Schmier's second period class. Rolls for today. Some of you will be flying the Mavic outside. Um, some of you are repairing. For the first time, Union High School is offering a drone class, and recruiting students wasn't a problem. The counselor said, well, we have a drones class that's coming. I was like, you have a drones class? I was like, 
like the flying drums. She was like, yes, flying drums. I was like, and you do that for a whole class. She was like, yes. I was like, sign me up. <laughs> and students haven't been disappointed because in drone class, you get out of the classroom a lot. Basically, as soon as we got the drones, we started flying. So like, it wasn't just sit and learn about them. It was, okay, here's a drone, figure out how to take off and land. Don't hit anyone, stay six feet away and go for it. And while they're going for it, they're learning, maybe even more than they think. They came in thinking they're gonna get one thing and they're getting more. We also goof off and we have fun with drones because as they're doing that, what they don't know is they're getting better at flying and control. And students aren't just learning to fly a drone for fun. This class opens up their eyes to how these skills can lead to a job. I didn't know that there was good pay for them and like different jobs for drones, for drone pilots. The dream is some of them will continue on and be in a commercial drone pilot. Um, some of them uh, might just go on to computer programming. So through this, some of them are getting the bug. They're like, ooh, I want to program this thing. Some are mechanically minded, and so it's a chance for them to think about electrical engineering. While students might be thinking about different futures, in the present, they're all thinking they can't wait for second period. It brings a different feel to it, just to like, know that, oh, you get to go to this class and have fun and while learning new things about different drones. Like, robotics is super cool to me, and, you know, flying's pretty dope, too. Calling it good? Here's something I learned. Everybody wins when Timber Joey visits your school like he did recently when he visited Riverview Elementary School. The Portland Timbers and Portland Thorns mascot stopped by to talk soccer, sports, and more importantly, share a personal story on why he loves to read. The moment Timber Joey entered Riverview Elementary School, he right. knew he was a welcomed guest. Welcome, Timber Joey! Oh my gosh, wow, that is awesome. They were super excited and talking about it days in advance. Um, our staff really got excited too. Of course, Timber Joey was happy to talk about his job as the Timbers and Thorns top cheerleader. So in 2008, I became the mascot for the Portland Timbers. Before that, I did lots of sports. But also sports and soccer, they were just a small part of his message. Let's brush our teeth twice a day. Can you guys do that? Yeah! What is this? Two, two, four, one, four. Math, right? He talked about health, he talked about um, kids being involved, and he talked about you know reading and the importance of exercising our brain. Timber Joey didn't just talk about the importance of reading. In all four of the classrooms filled with second and third graders, he enthusiastically read a book aloud. Ding dong! Happy Thanksgiving! Did you order a pizza? asked Farmer Jake's wife. It wasn't just the act of reading that impacted the students. It was Timber Joey's willingness to share his early struggles with learning to read that really captivated his willing listeners. In second grade, I couldn't read. I had a real issue reading, and so I ended up going to Oregon State University during the summers, and I got to read. And I figured out that I missed out on tons of adventures because I wasn't reading books. I think if somebody was to tell that to me when I was younger, I would have been more comfortable. I really struggled reading. I, I struggled reading out loud. Uh, I was very embarrassed and shy to read out loud, even up into fifth, sixth, seventh grade. Um, and I think if they have a little bit of motivation and know that it's okay, that hopefully they'll be better readers and, and have more confidence going into it. Timber Joey's visit certainly made it a day to remember for students and staff at Riverview Elementary School, but Timber Joey says the students and staff made it a very special day for him. And this is uh, one of the most welcoming schools I've ever been to. Uh, great school and, and great students. While we're talking some soccer, let's toss it back over to Matt Griffin once again for a wrap up on the EPS sports broadcast season. It certainly was a busy fall for the EPS sports broadcast team, Craig. I can get tired just thinking about it. Over the course of nine nights, we teamed up with current and former video production students and staff from Evergreen Public Schools to broadcast eight football games, four soccer games, and four volleyball games. I want to thank all of the crew members who make our broadcast possible and a reminder that you can find all of our sports broadcasts on the Evergreen Public Schools YouTube channel in the EPS Sports playlist. Craig, back to you. 
Thanks, Matt. And after the fall sports season, the EPS video team moved into concert mode. Over four nights, they recorded the annual Central, East Side, South Side, and North Side Choral Festivals. The festivals bring together elementary, middle, and high school choirs for an evening of music and a chance for parents to see the progression our choir students have made as they move their way up from elementary school. All of our concert broadcasts can be found on our YouTube channel in the Music and Fine Arts playlist. And finally from us, safety with a smile. We want you to meet Anna, a standout member of Columbia Valley Elementary School's Safety Patrol. She makes sure that students, staff, and families start their day off with a smile. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Fifth grader Anna Perry is the most prolific high-fiver at Columbia Valley Ooh, Elementary yeah. School. What do you do? High five. High five? <laughs> do you enjoy the high fives? Mm -hmm. Can I get a high five? Mm -hmm. Bam! <laughs> Good job. But Anna isn't just out there high-fiving on her own. She's a full-fledged member of Columbia Valley's Safety Patrol. Lo and behold, I put the call out for people to show up to do their training at the, before school, and there was Anna. And didn't even hesitate. We had things for her to do. We had um, things that we could train her to do. And she was more than capable. And, and she was just so enthusiastic about being here. Yes, Anna has Down syndrome. But that really wasn't a consideration for school administrators when Anna stepped up to join up. Evergreen School District is so committed to not only the academic learning of our students, but their social emotional life. And um, that just strikes at the core of a community. How do we care for each other? How do we include each other? How do we welcome each other? And, and Anna embodies that. The rest of the safety patrol just thinks of Anna as another teammate with some special skills. She's doing a good job and she's being very kind to everybody. Um, I think it helps not just crossing people but also giving high fives and stuff. How do people react to Anna when she's, when she's out here? They're happy and like they all get happy because like Anna just kind of like lights everybody up. Anna's mother loves seeing her daughter play an important role in the school community. Hi, can I have a hug? Yeah. For her, I think it's sh seeing that she's being accepted as well by her peers. Owen! Owen! Let me see Anna's not just accepted, she's appreciated. And that's something that'll make any mother just a bit emotional. People just smile, the students smile, the parents smile. They love seeing Anna out here. Um, I had a parent tell me the other day that her son enjoys having Anna on safety patrol because that makes his day. And when she told me that the other day, it just brought tears to my eyes. Good morning. Oh, so fine. Okay, that's it for this episode of EPS Inspires. Until next time, thanks for watching. Here's a look at how you can keep up to date with Evergreen Public Schools on social media. Check out our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash evergreenps. Follow us on Twitter at evergreenps. Our Instagram account is evergreen underscore public underscore schools. And check out our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash evergreenschools.